amazing. Well, for this next question, you may have to sort of indulge me a little bit, but so my favorite band of all time is is the band Queen. I'm not sure if you're too familiar with with Queen, um, Freddie. Enough, Mercury. yeah. I mean, a popular well, band. They released this song um, called Thirty Nine, and this it's a sort of science fiction tale of these volunteer explorers who leave Earth in the year thirty nine. I don't know that could be, you know, way in the future, but they they go out in search of a uh, to explore this planet to sort of colonize it because the earth is decaying. They come back and they're a year older and they're really excited to tell the earth that they found this, you know, this new planet, we're all gonna move there. They come back to find that a hundred years have passed, that their families are all gone, that the earth is sort of this small gray deteriorated planet. And I never really understood the concept of it. Um, the song was written by Brian May, who is, who is an astronomer, so obviously he loves the sort of sci-fi sci tales. But I never really understood it, and, and years later I, I heard that it was sort of playing on the theme of, of time dilation. Um, mm -hmm. I was wondering if you could maybe explain that concept to someone like myself, if that's even possible. Uh, yeah, so uh, let's remind people that the uh, Brian May, the uh, lead guitarist, right, and creative force behind Queen, as we now know it, uh, uh, he has a PhD in, in astrophysics. I think it's from uh, University College London, I think. Uh, I could be wrong. If, if I'm wrong, I'm not all that wrong. It's, it's, uh, and that PhD he attained long after Queen was, uh, long after Freddie Mercury had died. Uh, he basically went back to school. He, he had, a, he had a, a very strong interest in this. And I've met him only once. Uh, and I feel like we should have had more intersections of our lives, but it makes complete sense that the storyline would have come from him because it's one of the fundamental things you learn in beginning of modern physics. And you take a class in modern physics, which would be relativity and quantum physics. This is physics discovered in the 20th century as opposed to the 19th century or 18th century or 17th century where the rest of classical physics was discovered. So... <clears throat> It, all it says is you exist in space and you exist in time. Well, and that's not so weird to think of it that way, that you need two coordinates to localize you in this universe, a space coordinate and a time coordinate, right? So I, I don't want people to trip up on that because we have an intuitive understanding of it. For example, if I say to you, Hey, uh, let's have lunch tomorrow at 12 noon. What is your next question to me? Where? Where? Okay. You knew that time alone was insufficient to establish our connecting in this universe. And by the same token, I'll say, hey, uh, I'll meet you at, at, at uh, Marty's pub. What's your next question to me? When? When? Hmm. So we know intuitively that for us to meet, we have to provide a space coordinate and a time coordinate. They are fundamentally conjoined. All right. It turns out when you travel at high speeds and other people don't, then your coordinate system changes for you at a different rate than it does for others. So um, what's the best way example I can give? <clears throat> if you travel in space, your space coordinate is changing and other people isn't, all right? That's not so weird. Well, if you travel fast, your time coordinate is changing too. We can show the equations that require that that happen. And it's all traceable to Albert Einstein in 1905, his special theory of relativity. And we know it's real and it works and we have tested it. So there is a speed and a time with which you can travel and stay away, where if you come back after one of your years, Earth could have aged 10 years, 100 years, or even 1,000 years, depending on how fast you moved. 
So in that sense, yes, we can go to the future, arbitrarily far into the future. We just can't, as far as we know, go into our own past. And that would be kind of dangerous if you think about it. Like suppose you prevented your parents from meeting each other. Then you wouldn't be born enough to then go back into the past to prevent your parents from meeting each other. So that makes it <clears throat> one of the more fun time travel paradoxes that there is.